Hey, what's up guys? That intro that you just saw was made in the new D5 Render 2.2. I've been using it since the preview version and in today's video I want to show you my top 11 features available in this new release. So without further ado, let's get started. The feature number one, it's snow and rain. So now in D5 render you can add snow or rain to your scene and to do this you can go to the inspector here on the right side and you'll find a new one called precipitation. And if you click this, now you see rain and snow. So if you make the slider all the way to the left you'll see rain and to the right you'll see snow. Right now you cannot see anything because we first have to increase the strength. So if you increase the strength, you will start seeing some of this uh, snow and all the way to the left, we will start seeing some of the raindrops falling. So if I increase, we can see a little bit better. By the way, if you're not seeing this happening in real time, it's because you need to go to the display and on the display, you will find this icon real time. So if you see the icon like this, you'll not see the, the drops, but if you see like it's running, then you can see this uh, animated. And continue to speak about the precipitation. We can increase here as well the pounding. And this is the amount of water that is on the ground level. Okay. And uh, if you increase it, you will also see the drops falling here. If we decrease, you can see that it will be just the slight effect, just one drop here and there. But we have still a lot of pounding. So for example, if we re reduce here, we have just a little bit and we can still reduce as well this amount. So we have just a slight effect. And if we move it to the right side, we'll have snow. And again, we can increase this uh, pounding to have a fully covered. And you can see that even here on the top, the bushes will also be, be covered with snow. And we can increase the strength all the way or decrease a little bit for more variation. And so quickly we can have a snowy scene or a more moody scene with a lot of rain in our in our ground so second feature is decals so now when you go to the assets let me move the window to this side so we can see it a little bit better so now here you will find on the bottom a category called decals so if you click them uh, you will see here all the 154 currently available decals but let's go here to road signs and let's select this one, for example. And you can see that if you apply it, okay, you can scale it down, you can increase. You can still make changes here to the, to the material, the transparency as well. So if you want this effect to be more subtle or not. So you can add here sidewalk. Well, here it will not make much sense. Um, but we have as well damaged pavement, so if we want to look straight a little bit worn out, we can also do this. So we have these effects here available. So we have a lot of this to, to use and to create your uh, unique scene. You can also try to match better the color. So let's say that I want this here to be a little bit darker can go to the base uh, to the base color and just decrease here on the value here okay, and it's matching better our scene and of course I encourage you to explore this because you have a lot of types of decals see even for leaves you have for water strains rust, rust graffiti so you can explore all of this and see all of these new decals that are available in this version and by the way, I want to give you a very good tip for these decals. If you go to the assets and let's say that I'll add here um, a vehicle. So let's go here to vehicles. And I can add this one, for example. And immediately we see that we have here some issue because the decal is drawing on top of the car, as you can see here, right? There's several ways to fix this well one is that you can uh, click here on the size and and then we can start decreasing here the x and so this way it will draw only 
on the floor and not on top of the car. So to do this in every decal, it will take a lot of work. So my suggestion is when you are making these cars, you select the path tool, vehicle, and if you now create a, let's select here the path and done. And now let me make them go really slow and let's reduce the width. So now you can see that these uh, cars, well, actually, let me move this decal to this side and let's put it back how it was. I'm going to increase a little bit more the height. Okay. So you can see that now it will not draw on top of the car. So if you, if you do this, if you do this way with the, with the path tool, all the decals will not be drawn on top of the cars. So this is my tip for you for making these uh, decals avoid a collision with the, with the cars. Oh, before I forget, I want to let you know that these two scenes right here, they are already available in my new update of D5 Render 2.2 of my D5 Render course, along with two new models coming up. I'll leave a link in the top right corner and also in the description below this video. And feature number three is layer management. Now on the left side, you can see here layer. So by default, we have the default layer and we can create here a new one. And for this one, let's rename it uh, cars, for example. And now if we go to this path, the vehicle path that we created, we can see on the right side, we can see here default layer. So let's select and now we can select cars. So now every time we want to just hide this layer, we can go here and we see this eye icon. We can click and they will be hidden, all of these vehicles, because they are in this cars layer. You can also lock this layer. So it means that now, whatever you do, you cannot select this, these vehicles. Sometimes this is useful if you are working with too many things in the, in the scene. So you can just lock some items and so it's easier for you to work. You can add many layers and add all of these, for example, the vegetation in one layer, the cars in another. So it will be easier for you to manage big projects. And feature number four is brush records. This one is one that I really enjoy because now every time you made anything with a brush, it will be stored in history and you can disable, delete, rename. So you can do whatever you want with this and it will be much easier to manage what we are doing. So let me just quickly show you how this works. You can go to the assets and now if you go to model and let's find here some nature and we can find some grass. Just going to use this one first. So if I had here a couple of grass elements here, I'm just going to make it way bigger so you can see a little bit better. Okay. So I just add a lot of these grass elements here. Actually, I'm going to put this a little bit. Okay. And now if you go here to the select, we disable this brush first and now just select the, the ground, the ground mesh that you painted and you will see here brush records and you see brush history. So you can click the eye icon again to, to hide this, uh, this uh, brush, you can see. So you can see it before and after. Also, if you right click, we'll have more options. Rename, for example, I can rename this grass01, for example, and you can delete. So now you don't have to select here the, the erase and now erase like this one by one. No, you don't have to do that. You just uh, select this uh, brush. Again, select the ground level and uh, I can simply click delete. And again, if I, for example, add a couple of these and now I want to add some different ones. Let's see. So I want to add these ones as well. You can see that now I have two brush history. So I have the grass and I have this other plant that I just added. So this will be easier for you to manage. So you can just hide and unhide and one and another. And so this will be easier to manage these uh, vegetation elements that we are adding to our scene. And the feature number five is GI for vegetation enhanced. So this is the global illumination for the vegetation elements that are from D5 library. And I'm just going to show you here the same 
version that I made in D5 Render 2.1 with the same assets in the D5 Render 2.2. And you can see here the before and after. And basically you have a little bit more strong shadows and everything doesn't look so flat. So I think in the end, the result is a little bit better for these uh, vegetation elements. By the way, if you want to learn how to make an exterior render with D5 Render, I have a video for that here on YouTube. I'll leave a link in the top right corner and also in the description below. Next feature is new model and material assets. One nice thing that D5 Render has is their material and assets library. And it just improved a lot of the models and added new materials in this new version. And let me just quickly show you, if you go to character, you see this icon here on the top. It means that this is a new asset and they added a lot of new character assets. And if you select any of these, let's select, for example, the dynamic ones. And I'm just going to add here character again with a path tool. You can just make it from here. Uh, actually, first you need to select the model before applying the, the, the path and give me this one or this one. And until here. Okay. So now let me just add another character like this one. And I can increase the density, the width, maybe a little bit better, less dense. And I think the animation of these assets were improved as well. And so you can explore because they do have a lot of assets now. As you can see here, just for character, they have almost 1000 character assets. I didn't download all of them yet, so it's a lot of them. But uh, you can go to search the categories and see all the categories that they have. And as for the materials, you can see here on the material and you'll see the new ones. For example, if I search for say roof tile i know that they have a lot of a lot of them that are new and you can explore all of these new assets and speaking of d5 assets i have made this scene right here with only d5 render pro assets and as i said it will be available for all the students of d5 render course as a bonus and feature number seven is new post-processing parameters and in this are included the tint the chromatic aberrations and vignetting and so if we go here to the effect, you will find now the vignetting, chromatic aberration and tint here on the top. So this tint, basically, if you move it to the left, it will make your scene a little bit more greenish and to the right, a little bit more towards the purple tones. And the, the next one is the vignetting. Usually in the real lens, you always have a little bit of dark corners around because of the type of the, the lens, right? The spherical type of the lens. So if you make a realistic render, we can always bring those uh, imperfections from the real world lenses to our render. And with this vignette, now we can do that here inside D5 render directly. So we just increase this and you can see that it starts making these corners here a little bit darker. Another one is the chromatic aberration. And this is another thing that uh, usually the lens, the real physical lens have. It's an imperfection, but uh, we can add this as well here. And if we move it to the, to the right, now I'm exaggerating it. <laughs> you can see that this is completely exaggerated, but you can see what is this effect. So I recommend keeping it uh, a subtle, subtle effect, not, not too strong, but now you can add this directly here. Next one is a new widget feature, it's projector. So if you go here to lights, you see that you will see the same lights that were in D5 Render 2.1. But if you go to here on the top menu, go to preference, and now in the widget, you have projector. So let's activate. And now we can see here on the lights again, projector. And so this projector is basically like you have in a cinema or sometimes at home as well, these projectors, and you can place it where you want. So just gonna place it here just to show how it works and uh, you can select all of these parameters here you can select the video so I'm going to try to find some video to play here so I just added here the intro video and uh, you can increase here the intensity of this effect of course this will not be the best place to have a projector but uh, you understand the idea now 
So now you can have a projector in your scene. And feature number nine is follow focus for depth of field effect. And to show you this, I'm opening here this uh, demo scene. And uh, if you go here to camera, before we had this depth of field and we had this set focus. So if we set focus here, let's put on these glasses here. I'm going to increase all the way. You can see that now if I move, it stays out of focus, right? I can always go here and set the focus again. But now if I move, it's all out of focus again, right? So I move fo forward, becomes, well, it's hard even to make it in focus to find the right position. So now we have this follow focus. And so when we set it, now every time we move the camera, it will always keep the focus on this point that we set focus. And so this is a nice feature, especially if you are making video. I think this is the purpose where you're going to use this, uh, this follow focus. Next one is emissive material optimized. And so this one, as you can see here in this uh, before and after, you can see here a little bit the difference. And before, when you had the value of one, it was already strong. Now to have uh, basically the same effect as you, want, as you had with the one, the value of one, you probably have to insert 100. So I don't know what they made behind this, but now you're gonna have to change a little bit, especially on the old scenes, you probably will have to change the emissive materials to the new values. And the last feature is merge project. And this new feature is useful when you have large projects and you want to collaborate, you can merge both projects together to take some elements from, from each project. And uh, to do this is uh, very easy. Now you just open one project and you can go to the file, the menu, and now file, and you don't see anything. <laughs> Why? Because you have to go to first preference and then the widget and merge project beta. So let's activate. Now we can go here, file, merge project. So it's asking me if I want to save changes here. I don't want to save changes on this project. So I'm going to say no. So I have here my main project. Now I can click add project. So I will add this uh, road scene that we were seeing before. Okay, I can see here the road scene. And now save location. So let's just select a folder. and then you can click Merge. You can click Done. So let me know in the comments below what you think of this new version of D5 Render. And I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a like, and I'll see you in the next one.